Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now, here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. This is Bruce Hutchin, and it's uh, the 1st of February, so I hope everybody's listening to this. It's finally warmed up where you are, and this is a special treat. Sean Matson is on the show today. He is president of Strike Force Energy. He's a former Navy SEAL. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it for having me. Yeah, and I'm excited we finally got together in that folks, we got some announcements coming throughout the show that are going to make you really happy that you're going to listen to it. You should listen through the whole show to get the various promo codes. But to start it off, like any entrepreneur, there's struggles, there's successes, and there's failures. But where is Strikeforce now in the realm of energy drinks? Yeah, so we started the company in 2016, primarily focused on getting our product downrange to soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, as a way that, because we could ship this all over the world and wanted it to be a product that had less ingredients. So it was a little bit healthier for them and it actually still tasted like an energy drink. So we started off getting product down to those guys deployed online, selling to various police stations, firefighters, and then kind of grew into some of the civilian population as well and picked up. But right now we're online we're up and down the East Coast with uh, 7-Elevens from Maryland down to Florida, and hopefully in the coming months going nationwide with 7-Eleven and other retailers uh, You know, as we continue to grow this thing out. That's our ultimate goal and then be a worldwide product. So we've already shipped to over, I think, 30 or 40 countries already all over the world just because our product is so easy to ship. People from Australia to the UK and other countries, they find our product and we ship it out to them. Now, one thing I have used, not your energy uh, drink, but the energy drink in a straw or a sleeve, especially when I'm extreme hunting, when I'm up above 10,000 feet hunting sheep or mule deer. And I like the packaging that you have. You got a copy of that packaging? Yeah. So this is it right here. And you can see it's a liquid. This is actually a liquid in here. It's not a powder and it's a clear liquid. And so when you pour it into your beverage, it stays clear. And so one question, obviously you mentioned going above 10,000 feet, this stuff's not going to freeze. I think it takes below 30 degrees for it to freeze. So, you know, in some of the weather that we're getting right now on the polar vortex (laughs) stuff in the North, it's not funny folks. It's really not funny. It might have some freeze up there, but even that, right? Like you'd have to leave it outside or something. And typically you can put, this is equivalent to a 16 ounce can of your typical canned energy drink. So it has 160 milligrams of caffeine, which is roughly about half of a grande Starbucks coffee, dependent on which roast and things like that. They usually run about 330 milligrams. So I'm throwing out a lot of numbers, but Essentially, this is about half of a Starbucks coffee, but you add it to water or tea or you know, it can go hot tea or cold tea. You can do it into sparkling waters if you're into that. Or if it's a weekend and you want a refreshing cocktail, you can put it in vodka and soda water. A lot of our redneck friends love it in, in the nice race car, NASCAR beer. So you can take a grape, for example, and pour it into a Budweiser, Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light any of those like lighter beers like that, it tastes just like grape soda. So just a lot of versatility in the product from whether you're out hunting, doing some extreme sports, or you want something on the weekend. Now, we know the energy drink is huge. It's a billion-dollar industry. What made you think you guys, you and Bruce, could pony up and make this work? Like you said, we're different, right? We've created an entire new category in this. So you have your stick packs, like think of Crystal Light or some of the other powdered type drinks, right? Well, one, they're powder. They don't taste like an energy drink. None of them taste anything like an energy drink. Then you have like a Mio or something like the Squirt on Demand type stuff, which again, they don't taste like an energy drink. They're colored. 
And ultimately, they don't give you consistency. So if you're a Coke drinker, you drink Coke because you want it to taste like Coke every time you drink it, right? You don't want to pick up a Coke and be like, eh, that kind of doesn't taste like a Coke, right? Like you're a Coke person because you love that consistency and that flavor. That's why we buy certain products because we like that consistency. And so with ours being that it's a single serve item, when you pour this into 16 to 20 ounces is what we recommend into that volume of your beverage, you're going to get that consistency today, tomorrow, next year, three years from now, it doesn't matter. You're going to get that consistency every time. So there's no guess game in that and going, okay, I got to add a little bit more. Now I need to add a little bit more water and trying to make a uh, chemistry (laughs) project because we all hated chemistry and, and you don't want to do that now. So that single serve piece of it was why we thought it created a whole new category. We came into the market knowing that we needed to have less ingredients than your typical canned energy drink. So we have about a third of the ingredients that you find on your canned energy drinks and then less of those ingredients too, being that we're our military focus group. We all like to go do extreme sports. I enjoy going skydiving. I enjoy hiking and hunting and just being outdoors, camping and other things like that. So fishing and everything. And I want to make sure what I'm putting into my body is not just a laundry list of ingredients in there. So we created a new category. So long story longer, that's why we felt like it was a time to get into the market. And the reception has been very well so far for us. And we see a huge potential because our customers are still buying the regular canned energy drinks when it's convenient for them. They go into a 7-Eleven or someplace and they're running off to work. Well, they can grab that, but they're grabbing two or three of these on their way out too, because when they get to their office or later, they can have this at the right time. And same thing with hunters and things like that, or or anybody that goes outdoors or you're out on the go a lot. You don't want to be carrying around (laughs) a six pack of energy drinks. One, you can't keep them cold and two, the bulk and heavy. So you either have water or have the ability to make water. So you could throw this in there and it's going to taste like an energy drink. Let's go back to the genesis. I mean, so you and Bruce were sitting in, for lack of a better word, Starbucks and said, let's create an energy drink. Is that how it's happened? Or, Yeah, I mean, so a little bit. So Bruce came up with the idea initially and he was sitting down eating a hot dog, uh, man, probably five, six years ago now. You know, we're three years old. So yeah, about almost six years ago, he was eating a hot dog and he was pouring ketchup onto his hot dog. And he was just like, wait a minute, like, why can't we just take the chemistry that's in an energy drink and put it into a ketchup packet? So that was the initial idea of, well, now you can do this and you could ship this all over the world. And then he and I met late 2015 and we were working on a project and he had this idea and he was showing it to me and put some of this chemistry into a water bottle and I was blown away. I was like, what is this stuff? This stuff's amazing. I was still active duty at the time. And I'm like, Hey man, like, am I going to positive on a drug test? Like, what is this? Like, you can't just throw something up. I'm an active duty SEAL officer. And you just threw something foreign into my drink that I have no idea what it is. I'm just like, how great, how am I going to answer for this on like a random drug test? And all of a sudden like sweet. So he was like, Nope. He's like, it's just caffeine, vitamins, potassium, and acids for flavoring. And I was like, okay. And immediately fell in love with the flavor of it. Really saw it tasted exactly like a Red Bull without an aftertaste. And I was like, man, I really think you're onto something. He was like, I'm not really sure what this could be or where it is or what it is. And I was like, hey man, give me a few weeks and let's go see. And so he had a little bit of samples in this like white labeled packaging. And I sent them around to friends that were for deployed downrange and a few others down to other areas of Florida and some out in California. And the response again was just like, what is this stuff and where can I get more? And so I sent that all to him. And a few months later, we started a company and the rest is history. So we had no idea how to, we were going to really manufacture this stuff or do anything. Cause when I came back, I was like, Hey, this is a hit. Let's make this. And he's like, well, we don't have a machine. We don't have a company. Like, I don't know what this looks like either. So a few weeks later, we started the company in January 5th was actually like our first 
sale of 2016. We just had that three-year anniversary, basically. We turned on a website, started producing product, and it's been a long road, but it's been exciting. Well, the exciting thing I see, I love your Instagram post, and um, <laughs> I'm sure that's a main driver for you. You know, It has been, uh, yeah. And I look at that and I go, okay, so a couple of guys, they get an idea, they're making it work. And that's why we're talking together because my listenership, they all hunt now and some drink beer and some drink whatever, <laughs> but they all hunt and the energy drink market is huge. I mean, it's a huge thing because it's just everybody wants that little bit of juice and to carry around the cans doesn't work, especially if I'm up in the mountains. I live in Colorado and I spend a lot of time in the mountains scouting or just being in the mountains. So cans don't work. So it all has to be freeze dried food or packets like you have or tubes, which have the powder. Now with yours, I'll be using yours and I'm excited to, to get that on the mountains and, and start using it and, and seeing how it affects me. When you think of that, you think of the opportunities that people have. And so we talked a little about Strike Force. Let's talk about Sean and what drives you to be a successful entrepreneur because you are successful. You created a product, somebody bought the product, so you are successful. If yeah. nobody else bought it, you'd still be successful. You're down the road and great things are going to happen because one or two things, you're going to just completely blow it up or somebody's going to come in and just buy it. Those are the two things that are happening with any business. And you get it over successful and you go, no, we don't want to sell it. Or somebody comes in and says, heck yeah, we'll sell it. And then we'll be consultants or whatever. Then we'll go figure out what we're going to do next. But let's right. talk about Sean and what some of your character traits that helped you get to where we are today. I am a no fail person. So I love the operational side of things and just going to go do something and go start and go. I'm very much that active person in the company. So my title is a president and things like that, but very engaged in the day-to-day -day things. For me, that's what's exciting about being an entrepreneur is no two days are the same. And like every day that I wake up, it's always, let's see what we can do to keep moving forward, keep driving forward. I look at what we've built so far and I see so many resemblances of what had at like in my platoon and things like that, where each guy has a specific job in the platoon and he's the expert. So like your sniper or your breacher or the lead nav, like all these guys have a knack for that specific job and they're the subject matter expert, right? But just about every other person in that platoon knows how to do that job also. They're not going to be as good or as efficient or you fill in the blank, but they know how to do it so that either one, if that guy ever went down, someone could step up and take over that job and we could figure out how to continue the mission and it's not going to be a failure. But two, the saying is your jack of all trades, a master of none, right? Like, and that's exactly how we've built our team in this as well. So there's a lot of guys that are involved and some days can get very frustrating because you have a lot of people putting in input and stuff. But at the end of the day, I think it all makes us better because if Bruce, if you were in charge of one thing and you were stovepiped and that's what you continue to do, you're always going to get those same results because you know what you know and you revolve and you surround yourself around your team but if you're never talking to these guys or never talking to these guys or these guys, then you're always going to get that same, same thing over and over and over again, because those are the same guys that are giving you feedback and ideas and everything into that. Well, if you mix it up a little bit and keep things interesting, then that allows for a better product at the end. Sometimes it might make it slower to get to the end point, but you're going to have a better result to that. And so I really enjoyed that part of it and being the one of the core of it and having little pieces and I'll still get into customer service tickets from now and then. I'll still go out and go sell product or walk into 7-Elevens and meet with owners. But at the end of the day, that gives me firsthand experience of what's actually going on at the front lines of our business. And I can peel back the onions and figure out how we can do things better that the TV show 
undercover boss is a great example of how that works in large corporations. But where they had failed and why they have to go on those shows is because they never built that in from the beginning. They ultimately, as soon as they started growing, they were like segment, 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 and start stovepiping everything. And then no one talks to each other. And then it's like, oh yeah, you remember John from the admin department? Oh, he still works here? You know, like that stuff shouldn't happen in an organization. And I think we see more and more of that model being used in some of these tech companies and other successful businesses that are out there because they've gone away from offices and things like that and have more communal type workplaces so that people are more engaged and that just drives the innovation and it drives collaboration. And then ultimately, like I said, you get a better product when it's all said and done. Yeah, well said back in the day. And I can't remember the guy who wrote the book, but management by walking around and a large company. And what he did, he spent a large portion of his time, not in meetings, but going to where his business was in a global company. So he would jump on a jet and show up. I flew on Southwest Airlines and I never met Herb Keller, but he would fly. He'd just get on an airplane and fly. He'd leave Phoenix in the morning and get back to Phoenix at night, but he'd spend the whole day on different airplanes. And yeah, the crews would recognize him, but he would engage the people sitting next to him and say, man, what kind of airline is this? He would just be a person. They didn't recognize him, but he found out a lot of great intelligence. He was his own consultant. And right. so many times, I liked you how you said stovepipe, because we get locked into what I do well, but I only know what I know, and I can't bring anything else to the table because yeah. I'm done. I know exactly what I know, and I know it well, but that's good. But when it come, push comes to shove, I better know how to shoot the 50 cal and do the nav and take out that wall. I better know how to do all that and plus get us out of here if right. that's the case. And that's one thing in elite military teams, they are all cross chain because you never know. Exactly. Yeah. And you have to rely on. And the other piece of that, I heavily rely on feedback from the individuals that I put in charge or we put in charge of different departments for that. And, you know, there's always that basically once you make a decision, own it and then continue to go with it. Right. And have that mentality that trust your instincts and go forward with it, not the other way around where you're always asking, like, can I go do this? Can I go do this? Can I go do this? Something that I always said in the teams and also other guys would talk about, like at the end of the day, like when you're going in through a door for the first time, For me, I want a guy that kicks down the door and is able to react to a situation and move through without asking, right? The last thing I want is a guy to kick through the door, take two steps in and turn around and be like, what's next? And then take a couple more steps and move somewhere else. And then like, what's next? Like that is the worst situation ever to happen. And unfortunately there are, units that they have to put that type of leash on guys and because they can't trust them. And I was blessed to work with guys where that was the complete opposite. Usually it was like, Hey guys, whoa, (laughs) let's hold back. Let's hold back. We're biting off a little more than we can chew right now. Let's assess the situation. They've moved so fast. Sometimes it was kind of like, let's pull it back. Let's pull back and not the other way around. I'd rather be in that situation where we pull back than have to push people. And same scenario for us and strike forces and how we're growing our company, right? Like the guys that we have in this, again, I would much rather have a guy that I'm constantly have to reel in than a guy that I have to, Hey man, like you need to pick it up. Like you need to do more, right? It's a way better situation for everyone in that case. Yeah. And just back in the Coast Guard where I serve, the tight team, we had two pilots, we had a flight mech, we had me, the rescue guy, and then depending on the case, we have a medic with us. And that was it. And we all had to do our job and there was no hesitant. I mean, because hesitation could get people killed or doing just the wrong thing. If I'm on the hoist and I stop because I'm not sure that the cable wraps and then we're screwed, the whole mission screwed because I've got to cut away and the helicopter's worthless then. And just like you, 
if I go through a door and I turn around, I could be dead. Right. I mean, yeah. literally. And so let's move fast forward to a company and a company, you want people to own their mistakes and learn from them, but people are going to make mistakes. And I think so many people are afraid of making a mistake, making them look bad when the exact opposite is true. Go make mistakes. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then ultimately learn from them because I make mistakes all the time and it'd be embarrassing to tell you how many mistakes I make, <laughs> but that's just being a human and learning from those. What I try really hard to do is if I make a mistake and when I make a mistake, learn from that mistake and then assess from it and, and hopefully never make that same mistake twice. Right. Like you know, kind of that mentality, right. Of that. And ultimately it doesn't always work out in my favor for that, but that's what I strive to do. And then also I hope my people and the people that we work with and work for us have that same mentality as well as, you know, okay, Hey, I get it. I did make a mistake, but let's learn from that mistake and let's continue to move forward. What's a mission statement for Strike Force Energy? So our mission is, we call it the fuel for your fight, right? So whether your fight is a stay-at-home mom or the most extreme athlete, we're providing that fuel for your fight. And ultimately, that's through our energy product that we have here, but we also have others that we're in development right now. So we have a coffee product here that we just launched actually not too long ago. So this is actual black coffee. And it's in a liquid form, but it's real coffee in an instant. So you can pour it right into cold or hot water. But we've got protein energy bars coming soon. We've got other products that are in that space that, again, it's fuel for your fight. So whether you're a stay-at-home mom or a hunter or extreme athlete, we've got the product for you for that. And it fits in everybody's purse or pocket. I mean, the portability is outstanding. The portability and also the endless combination. So like I said, this is the original flavor, but you can put this in water, tea, beer, liquor, but then all the other flavors of water, tea, beer, liquor, not just the plain ones. So you've got all those things. And for that, what we call the flavor of freedom is you, one, it, we're veteran owned, we're American made. So that's the freedom part of it. But also the flavor of freedom means that because you can mix it in anything and on the go, if you want a specific flavor profile or a particular energy drink, so let's say you walk into some place and they've got great strike force and they've got strawberry flavored water, well, and you really want a strawberry and great energy drink, well, now you have that option where before you might not have that because they don't make that in a ready to drink can for you. So Again, it's just that flexibility and portability, like you said. And I think customers are seeing this more and more. I don't go to fast food restaurants, but from what I understand, a lot of fast food restaurants have switched to, before they'd have a soda machine and that soda machine would have five to 10 heads on it. Well, now they've got those big soda machines that are like the million flavored soda machine type things where you can, oh, I can add a little flavoring of this or add a little flavoring of this. And you get all those different combinations in a soda fountain we're providing that in a portable single serve packet with our product because the ready to drink stuff is already there in the convenience store or you have access to it in your fridge or other places. Now you can add another flavor and create that energy drink for that. Now, how do people buy your product? Uh, Strikeforceenergy.com is our website and the promo that we got going on right now, if you've never tried our product before, we're doing a, a free sample pack. So we have a sample pack that has all four flavors in it. If you use the code WRFREE before the end of February, you'll get that sample pack for free, 100% free. Just put in your name and your shipping address. You'll get that for free. And then after that, after you like the product and you want to come back and buy more, we've got another code for you. And it's uh, WR2019SF. And then that will be for 20% off every order after that. And you can get shirts and hats and we've got cups. We've got these really nice like vacuum cups plus bottles and other things like that, that that code will be good for as well. So, but strikeforceenergy.com is our website. And then obviously we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and all the other platforms. No, are you for sale on Amazon also? We are as well on Amazon. The only problem with Amazon, those codes will not be able to work on Amazon. But we are on Amazon. We're on Amazon Prime. We ship all over the world. 
Okay, so to follow up, if you've never tried Strikeforce Energy, use promo code WR free, and you're going to get a four pack free. It's going to come to you. Then after you get it, you like it, then use promo code WR 2019 SF, and then 20% off your whole order for the next 2019, right? That's correct. Yep. So it's pretty simple. And I look forward to getting my sample pack. We shipped it out the other day. And I look forward to having more of Sean pro staff or team on because we're going to be promoting him at least once every month for the next February now. So the next 10 months, we'll have somebody from Strike Force Energy telling us what's new, sharing what's new products and doing a product promo for them. So again, folks, this is an opportunity to get Strike Force Energy for free through you listen to this podcast, use promo code WR free on their website and you'll get it. Or once you like it, use promo code WR 2019 SF and you get 20% off your order. Anything else to add, Sean? No, we just appreciate it, Bruce, and uh, look forward to supporting the Hunter community and, and anything else you guys need from us. Like I said, we, we're on social media. We, we're constantly engaging with our customers on email or social media. So if you need anything from us, let our team know, and we look forward to giving you guys the fuel you need to go do whatever you guys got to do. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.